everyone. So I enjoyed painting that cacti for my um, son's room so much last time that I decided to make a series of cacti because I have a collage of IKEA frames on his wall and basically there are these three uh, small square frames which are Reba frames if you're interested and they are um, let me just show you at the back that's what they're called R I B B A and basically there are three of them in the middle of the collage and it would look so nice to have three different cacti so today I'm going to draw another cacti and I'm going to use um, um yeah so um, I'm going to actually um, swap this illustration here which I don't think works anymore with the color scheme that I went for so that's what I'm going to do and basically I will use um, this new um, pencil that I got from Faber Castell it's the um, 5H so it's a very hard it's the hardest pencil or the lead that I own and the reason is that it's supposed to be very light so I'm hoping that I will not need to erase it afterwards now so last cacti was a round cacti and I'm thinking that I possibly should um, draw out maybe a, a different shape today and um, I haven't decided what exactly I will do so you will see uh, me creating um, and let's see so for watercolors I'm going to use the same color palette because I really enjoyed it I call this my face palette that I put together there is a video of me swatching all of these colors and putting them together so if you want to have a look go have a look and um, there will be a link below in the description if you want to see all of the 18 colors that are here. Um, having said that, although I call it my face palette, I realized that a lot of these colors are very good um, for um, floral painting as well. So that's what I will be using. And in case you're interested, this is a Heidi Swap um, magnolia jane tin that came um with those you know the paper clips like mini paper clips golden um and i purchased it for exactly this reason to create a little tin and it's really really cute so heidi swap over here i'll leave a link below for you i got this one on amazon as always what would we do without amazon Okay, so let's go ahead and do the paint. All right, so I had to Google a few images just to get some ideas um, because I really couldn't pick what uh, shape to draw. I didn't want to draw just another um, sphere-shaped cacti. So today I'm going to draw one of those um, elongated ones. Okay, so this is the drawing, as you can see, it's very, very light. So that's good. And now let's move on to the um, painting part of it. So I'm going to start with the um, cacti and I will go into the Mayan blue genuine. And I will mix it up actually with the, where is it, this one here, the Paralene Green. So 
with the perylene green and some of this and we should get a nice color. And then I'm going to move on to the um, on to the flower. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it at that and then just use a pencil uh, where I need to. To create some definition. So that looks quite nice, but now of course the last bit to do is to settle the cacti into a bit of a shade. And that is then finished. Okay. I just realized what I forgot to do. I forgot to do the salt bit. So I think today I'm going to sprinkle the salt into the um, shade part of it. Or in fact, I'm just going to re-wet some of these areas these two areas here and sprinkle the salt onto that and that will lift some of that color and let's see a little bit onto here okay so I'm just going to wait for it to dry yet again and then I'm going to take a pencil and finish it off okay so um, while I'm still waiting um, for this area here to dry and you have to be really patient when it comes to salt. Uh, personally, I'm super impatient um, But yeah, you have to make sure that it's completely dry before you try to remove the salt um, So accidentally I had some salt um, uh, Crystals settled on the flower and I just removed them and I want to go ahead and uh, work on the details on the flower while the rest of the salt is still drying so I feel like kind of creating those you know long um, parts or whatever they're called that come out of the 
cacti, they tend to be quite long and pretty. Um, so I want it to be quite strong in colour. So I had to sharpen the uh, pencil to get a very sharp point to basically make these very fine but nice and black. So I'm using the uh, Polychromos um, pencil. And I do want to add a couple more. Let's see one maybe here like this, a very long one. And I will leave it at that. Then I'm going to add some of these black kind of dotty lines or the short um, short lines. So that kind of works. I quite like it. There's something with the flower today that I'm not fully loving. Something is still missing. And so what I thought what I will do today is I'm just going to make this a bit more stronger around the edges like so just to create a bit more dimension. And I will leave it at that. Okay, so that's that. And then um, I will use the Duochrome Cactus Flower uh, watercolor that I added recently added to my collection. I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit of it. It's a beautiful color. Um, and I love the fact that it's called Cactus Flower. So it's kind of fitting. Um, I don't know what to expect and how it's going to look on the pink but I'm just going to go ahead and try and see whether I make it better. It's a very pretty duochrome, like a purpley kind of blue duochrome. So I'm just going to add it in some places. It's quite translucent so you don't really need that much of it. And I'm just hoping that that will help me to pick up some of those lovely um, leaves. And I'm just going to put it actually on one side only and use a bit more water so it's not looking like gouache. I don't want it too strong. Make it a bit more translucent and blend in with the um, flower it actually looks really pretty so I'm going to go on to this one as well yeah very pretty actually um, maybe I should add just a little touch here as well onto the yellow and that is it I'm not going to add it all over just because I want to add a nice accent I wonder if you can see it here we go um, it looks a little bit better than before, it just has something something a little bit more um, happening to it. Okay, so at this point I think the salt is probably dried properly, so I can uh, now remove the salt from the cacti area and do the needles and um, let me just okay, do that. So I have removed the salt now everywhere. Um, so to avoid this kind of uh, flower looking like it's floating, I'm just going to go into the green on my palette that I used for the cacti and it's not going to be um, that same strength but that doesn't matter. I'm just going to bring it a bit closer and in fact this line here I'm going to cover up some of it as well just because it's a bit too straight and a bit too perfect looking so at least that way it's now blending in a little bit more and um, so that looks good and a couple of areas as well where it's a bit too much here and there and I'm going to do it over here as well okay and so now let's go on to 
the uh, prickly bits. So I'm going to dry this watercolor again and then come back for the prickle. Okay, so the cacti is ready so you can see the beautiful um, salt effect here on the paints gray after I removed the salt. And those areas that I re-wet, they didn't come through um, as strong as you um, as when you put the salt into the wet color when it's still wet um, but you still get a little bit of a texture here so let's go back and I cannot see actually where I drew those prickles but I'm just going to randomly uh, kind of add them here and there like so where the lines are and I'm probably actually not going to do them as many as I had originally drawn in just because I don't think I need to um, one here I think that should be enough probably and maybe one more over here like that I think that should be enough actually yeah, so that's going to be my, um, let me just settle these in these little grooves and like that. So I'm going to put this into the frame and then you can see what it looks like in the frame. So thanks for watching and see you soon. <coughs>